Welcome to the 202 episode of the Jamie Delaney Plant-Based Wellness Podcast. My name is Jamie Delaney, and I'm your host. I'm a plant-based cardiologist and endurance athlete living in Southwest Florida. Welcome, and thanks for tuning in. I have one more week. Uh, this is my last Saturday. Next Saturday, I'll be running the half marathon at the Asheville, and then the whole marathon on Sunday. Uh, the challenge, so do a half on one day, whole on Sunday, all on the Biltmore Estates up in North Carolina. Um, look forward to going to Asheville all the time. Great food. Um, I also have a surprise that I'll talk about next week, hopefully, but I've got a secret weapon coming for our pre-race nutrition. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. I've sampled it already and can't wait to eat it before um, the race. And I'll let you know uh, more about that uh, as it becomes available to all of you as well. But uh, be sure to take some pictures and post them on Instagram. And uh, again, let you know how the race goes. We're supposed to see a little bit of snow, which is okay because it's supposed to be snow or uh, sunny in the afternoon. So um, I can deal with a little snow on the trees. It always looks pretty uh, at the Biltmore State with a little snow and the daffodils coming up. So I'm looking forward to that and all the good plant-based restaurants up there and getting some good uh, juices and things. So that'll be great. I want to dedicate this episode to one. Well, it's she is my oldest patient. Um, and uh, I don't think she'd mind me using her first name, Winnie. Um she has been my patient since the since the 90s. I took care of her and her grandson, and uh, or I'm taking care of her, and I took care of her grandson. And Winnie is 101 years old, and to me exemplifies somebody of service. And I probably mentioned to her mentioned her on the podcast before, but uh, Winnie's cared for her husband and her daughter when she got sick, and then her grandson who was severely handicapped and. Um, Now Winnie's in her last stages of life, and we're trying to take care of Winnie and see that she has all the comfort measures that she needs as she joins her family um, eventually. So it's sad um, uh, to see uh, her life nearing the end, but it's something that we all um, eventually have to face. Um, It was within a month that she was still driving and uh, quilting for the uh, making quilts for the veterans and um, sewing for other people. So she has just been a nonstop person um, in her life. And, you know, I think that's that's what's kept her going. Um, positive attitude is what's kept her going. Uh, very feisty, very honest uh, person. So, um, you know, I, I've learned a lot from her and always have a smile when I think of uh, our, our times together. So, It's been amazing to sit and talk with her over the years about all that she's experienced in 101 years and how things have changed and what she's done and her perspective. But she's never been negative on the new things. Uh, She's, you know, um, always changed with the times and been ready to, you know, go to the next, next adventure. I think part of why she's done so well is that we have not over tested or over treated Winnie. Um, she broke both hips, uh, over the last 10 years and had those fixed. She had to have a pacemaker put in, um, for a slow heart rate. But other than that, um, she has, uh, done quite well. She's a little lady and has eaten conservatively. She's not plant-based, but, uh, eats more vegetables. Um, I would say mostly plants, uh, we could say, and cooks all her own meals. Grew up on a farm where they raised her, their own food. Um, uh, so, you know, I, I think that she is what we can call a, a healthy eater and she still in, enjoys her vegetables and, um, We've had the pleasure with our nutrition class and making soups. Bringing Winnie is one of our people that we we bring soup to once a month. Um, And today when I was visiting Winnie, um, she asked, uh, I said, what could I get you? And she says, how about some mashed potatoes and and mushroom gravy? So um, I'll, I'll tell that little funny story a little bit later. But on to a lighter note, as I usually always talk a little bit about what's going on, um, besides the marathons coming up in the next um, week, um, Backyard Garden is doing pretty good. Uh, mango trees are blooming. Uh, excited to see the mangoes. We're actually going to have a few this year. Picked a couple pat- papayas. Tomatoes and peppers are going strong. Uh, the saddest thing that happened in the backyard garden was my eggplant died on my tower garden, so I have to restart one. I think it just got too 
uh, too big for the tower garden and uh, just outgrew its root system. Um, as far as my training goes, you know, I'm tapering for the, the race. I actually went back to the swimming pool uh, for the first time in several months. I used the excuse of it being cold and all, every, every other excuse. And I was, you know, just became my, it's so much, I, I, running is my first love. So I used, to, I like to go out the door and take the dogs. And so uh, going to the pool is, you know, someplace I have to drive so I can, I can put it off. But I do enjoy the master's group over in Punta Gorda and we have great coaches. And um, so it was nice to, to get back over there and get back with uh, my swimming buddies and um, do uh, about an hour and a half of swimming this week. I also got back on my bike inside on the, um, uh, I used the Zwift and a Wahoo trainer. So I uh, did uh, a ride there. So I'm going to start uh, incorporating more of that. I do think I do better um, overall physically when I'm doing multi sport as opposed to just running. Uh, I tend to get myself out of whack. Um, you know, I've uh, talked about how I do mobility and my weight training over the course of this podcast, but I just don't think that I have uh, been precise enough about doing it. It's something that I'm learning. Um, I'm uh, realizing that, yes, the weight training is um, good for me, and I've certainly strengthened my legs and my back with it, but I've also uh, got my back and my legs more tight over it and probably some imbalances um, uh, just with the, the, the weight training and then the running and, of course, and then sitting during the day. Um, I do have a um, stand-up computer desk that I, that I try to use, but nevertheless, you know, I sit more than I stand probably during the day. I don't know. Uh, probably do. I, I try to get up and walk around every hour. Um, I'm somebody that fidgets a little bit. So, But nevertheless, you know, I'm in the sitting position, whether you're sitting in the car or sitting at a desk or sitting in the office. Uh, with patients. So I think that that contributes to things. And I've noticed that, um, you know, I, I become more, more tight. So I, I'm really focusing on uh, increasing uh, my flexibility. Um, I actually started seeing a chiropractor to, to have some stretching done and some um, resynchronization uh, around the psoas. And that's, that's helping a tremendous amount. Um, and I can't believe how good I feel after a few of those of those treatments, just kind of getting myself back in line and getting uh, some nerves firing in the right way. I've also, um, I'm going to, uh, if you haven't looked into Jefferson Curls, um, I, I'm going to try to do that to mobilize my low back and spine a little bit more. Um, it's basically a uh, curling of the spine, uh, vertebrae by vertebrae, um, with the aid of a light weight standing on a box. You can look up Jefferson curls, but I I think that's a good way to get uh, mobile because I think I've protected my low back uh, at the expense of um, my hamstrings um, getting more and more tight by letting my low back get uh, more and more immobile. So that's, uh, I guess, what I'm... uh, I'm, I'm going for uh, at this point uh, to try to balance out some of the, you know, deadlift and squats and sitting and zoas by doing these uh, Jefferson curls to get more mobile and doing some other things to get to, to really look at my mobility uh, and especially spinal mobility. Um, we're actually doing a challenge. I always kind of apply what's going on with me to, my, to the nutrition class and the membership. So the, the challenge this month is to, to have people pick out something that they can uh, work on their mobility as well. Um, I, I also have another secret mobility uh, exercise I'm trying to do. So I've done some before pictures. And so hopefully I'll have a good after picture and maybe I'll post it online if I can get where I want with uh, some particular mobility moves. So that's that's pretty much what's what's going on um, in the office and, and with training. I listened to an interview this week with Jim Coll- uh, with well, it was Jim Collins. Um, you know, he's best known for the book Good to Great. And every time I listen to a podcast that doesn't really deal with nutrition or exercise, I I learn something that I can apply to my practice. Um, and myself, and he was talking about, you know, if instead of looking at, you know, to-do lists, we always have a lineup of things we want to get accomplished. And as you know, certainly we have a lot coming up, um, in the next month with, uh, 
you know, our nutrition conference and a veg fest, and we're trying to get a book finished. And, you know, the to-do list can be daunting and you're carrying around things to do every day and schedules. But what would you, what would you actually, if you had a list to give up, what would you put on that list? And, um, and that's what he talks about, what things you would give up that would make your life better if you didn't do them. And I think that's a great way if you apply it to your health as well. What would you eliminate to make yourself healthier? Um, you know, that can be from a, a, a mobility standpoint as far as less sitting, um, you know, um, less folding into the, the couch or the recliner at night. Um, perhaps, you know, uh, less less. Uh, morning TV and more exercise, less social media that frees up time. People tell me that they don't have time to exercise. No, they don't really want to exercise. Everybody has time to get it in if you really want to. Uh, perhaps if, if you look at nutrition, what would you give up? What uh, We often talk about, um, you know, if there's just 200 calories that we would try to eliminate during a day, where, what, where would they be? And in, even in nutrition class today, we looked at even little things like condiments and even things like nutritional yeast. People talk about putting nutritional yeast on everything, but I, I got to tell you, there's a significant amount of calories that can come from, and even fat coming from nutritional yeast if it's used over and over again, um, and, and a lot of it. So these little condiments can, you know, whether it's mustard or nutritional yeast or, um, you know, ketchup or relishes or different sauces, um, and especially if people start to buy sauces and they have oil, they can they can really um, catch up. The other thing is, you know, people, um, we all tend to have this snacking addiction. Um, it's, it's a mere habit, but we do it. Um, you know, could you get rid of that on, you know, put that on your to list to get rid of perhaps? Um and, you know, it, uh, a, a lot of these things um, kind of, um, I guess they sabotage our, our own health. Um, so by making maybe a list that you could, you know, what would you give up if you were going to try to make yourself the healthiest that you possibly could? And sometimes it's maybe looking in from the outside as if you were, um, you know, if you were to treat yourself as special as you do your animals, perhaps, um, you know, I'm on the site and, uh, you know, everybody wants, you know, what's the best dog food. Um, I, I thought I'm on a vegan dog food or vegan animal site. And, you know, they talk about what to feed their dogs and, you know, make sure the dog's getting the right nutrient. And of course, if you go to the grocery stores, grocery store and all kinds of pet stores with all kinds of food and, you know, people want to buy their dogs the healthiest possible food that they can, even though you can't recognize the kibble. For the most part, there's no way of telling what's the regulation, what's really in that. So we buy what we think's in it or what they say is on the bag or what smells good to us. But it really, yeah, you know, it may not be true. And some of the dog formulations may have, you know, especially the ones with meat, they don't come from good sources. The styrofoam, can, the styrofoam containers can be processed along with the rotting meat and all this kind of stuff. But, but we're still worried about our animals. I was buying my cat, Vinny, here. Uh, some food this week and I'm looking because sometimes he gets a little finicky about what he eats and you know they had entrees with sweet potato and you know as a plant-based cardiologist sweet potato is great you know it decreases your risk of colon cancer and decreases macular degeneration but Vinny here is a carnivore and he probably doesn't really care about sweet potatoes um, but to me it seemed healthier you know it's like well maybe Vinny would like sweet potatoes uh, even though he needs his chicken as well. So he's, you know, he's going to get her, her some sort of meat product. So if you look at taking care of yourself as a human, like you would take care of a dog or a cat, you know, how could you make yourself more healthy? Look on the outside, would you, you know, what, what kind of food would you buy um, the human that is you to make you healthy? Um, and if you take your person, you, if you take your person out of it, um, I think you can... You know, it's like you, you wouldn't want to give your cat styrofoam or a bunch of chemicals, yet we stick a bunch of chemicals in our body in the form of junk food and, and processed food with, you know, a, a lot of words that we can't even pronounce. So if you were just to, you know, look at yourself as, you know, again, from the outside, how would you, how would, how would you take care of this, this human? And it, and it also kind of goes back into, um, I have patients that you know, their spouses are unhealthy. And, 
even though they're unhealthy, they still, um, you know, I have one patient that actually has to take care of his wife because she's so unhealthy and he does the grocery shopping and the cooking, yet he buys her things that she wants that are unhealthy, even though it's making her more unhealthy. Um, because we look at the happiness aspect, well, it'll make her happy because she's suffering from her health. But the reality of it is it won't make her happy because, one, it's a short-lived, you know, an egg's not going to make her not have pain. Um, she's, on, you know, to make her, you know, these short little bursts of happiness from eating junk food, perhaps. But they're, they're, they're not because they're just going to make the pain worse and the suffering more. So um, looking at what you could do to help your spouse to be healthy. Um, you know, we, we talked early, um, you know, on about Winnie. And, you know, Winnie asked for mashed potatoes. Well, Winnie doesn't eat vegan, but I'm not going to make Winnie mashed potatoes and turkey gravy to take down. I made Winnie mashed potatoes using almond milk, and I made a mushroom gravy and and mixed vegetables, and and it'll taste good. And she liked our plant-based stuff that we brought her in the past. But, um, you know, the mashed potatoes made plant-based are just as good as the other kind, but I won't make Winnie's stomach more upset by adding oil or some sort of greasy substance or or, uh, you know, causing her arteries to constrict and to her to have more pain and discomfort. Uh, she has bony problems by giving, you know, I don't want to cause any more inflammation than she already has. Um, so it's, you know, it's not, um, you're not withholding happiness from people. You're, you're trying to ease suffering. Um, you know, so I, I think we have to look at it different as far as comfort foods. What what truly are they comfort foods? And, you know, would you give your animal a, a so-called comfort food even though you it's going to make them more unhealthy? You probably wouldn't. But you don't want to hear it from people that can talk. You know, you don't want to hear the backlash, ooh, I don't like that, or ooh, the face, or whatever. Um, but really, in a couple of days after those people start feeling better, um, they're, they'll, they'll turn around and, and start to thank you. So I, I wouldn't be, you know, when people down in Florida are getting company to visit them, you know, they're complaining. It's like, oh, I've been derailed from my nutrition plan because I had to get all this junk food in for my family or my friends coming down to stay with us. And we just have one set of company after the other. And the reality is what kind of friends would come and stay with you and expect you to feed and expect you to derail your health plan in order to feed them stuff that's going to make them more unhealthy? So it's all in the way you, you look at it. Um, if somebody's coming to stay with you, this is an opportunity to showcase just how beautiful plant-based nutrition can be and just how tasty it is and how great it looks and how great you can feel. So if somebody's coming to stay with you for four or five days, you know, they can start to feel really good while they're here. It's like, maybe, maybe I'll just, you know, I really want to try that myself. And and they'll start asking questions. You don't have to make a big deal about you're feeding them plant-based and you're detoxing them or anything. You just cook beautiful food that, that looks good. And, you know, that brings us up to our, you know, why we're doing our conference. We, this is our fourth annual Charlotte County plant-based nutrition conference that we're having March the 30th. Um, and we're having it at Twin Isles Country Club for the uh, third time. And we went and, um, you know, this is the third chef that we are having to, um, you know, talk about plant-based nutrition and not using salt, oil, or sugar. And it's, and it's a big deal to a lot of chefs to be able to not cook that way. And, um, some of them frankly don't like it. Um, so this year, you know, we, we decided that we're going to, uh, we're going to work with people that want to showcase how beautiful plant-based nutrition is. And so we're, you know, we have our own chef that's going to be plant, that's plant-based, no sugar, oil, or salt that can present the foods in a beautiful way so that people that come to our conference that are maybe not quite plant-based or transitioning and they see the beautiful food and the beautiful spread that we have and how great it tastes and all the different combinations of food that you can taste, um, that they'll want to eat that way. Um, certainly wouldn't want to serve somebody that wasn't plant-based, not plant-based food, saying, you know, that to me it's saying, 
well, you're probably not going to like it or you don't have to, but we want to we want to show people just how great it is. So not only are we, are we having great speakers, uh, Alan Goldhammer is going to speak, um, you know, about water fasting and, and whole foods, uh, sugar, oil, salt free transition and how it can reverse cancers and reverse lifestyle diseases and Eric O'Gray uh, from Walking with Petey is going to share his story about how he lost weight and adopted his dog, and he and his dog both lost weight, and he and his dog both started running, and, and what a great thing that has been. And Eddie and I will also be giving lectures. Um, I'm going to be speaking about, um, you know, people like us do things like this, as Seth Godin says. Um, so I want to showcase that people eating plant-based uh, are happy people, are healthy people, are active people, um, are caring people. And I want to showcase that. And then um, on top of everything else, uh, show you know just how great the food tastes. Uh, we're also going to do a cooking demonstration. Uh, we have some uh, neat, quick recipes to to share with people, and then we're all going to do a question and answer session. And the in the environment is so small that um, you know it's 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 a homey homey feeling uh, that people will be comfortable in asking questions and meeting the speakers and interacting with each with each other. Um, so it'll be a great time. Uh, you can go to our website at drdelaney.com, D-O-C-T-O-R-D-U-L-A-N-E-Y.com, and hit the link uh, to get to the tickets on Eventbrite or go directly to Eventbrite. Um, there's also a link on my web or on the Facebook page. Um, but please go and get your tickets because we only have uh, so many more slots available. And in a couple weeks, we're going to have to close out um, the purchase of tickets because... Um, you know, we have to get our chef to get the food and everything. We want to have uh, just the right amounts. We're also going to have some great vendors. Uh, Mama Says is going to come down. Um, we're going to have a tower garden. And, uh, of course, we're going to have books from Dr. Goldhammer and um, uh, Eric O'Gray. So it'll be a great day. You can get some books signed. Um, the Punta Gorda is great weather. We had uh, temperatures in the 80s today, sunny skies. Um, we have a lot of walkways to ride, bikes, walk, run. Uh, kayak, um, stand-up paddleboard, so there's uh, make a weekend of it. Eddie and I are also doing private consultations on Friday before. If you'd like to come in and meet with us personally, we'd love to meet you. Otherwise, we'll meet you there on Saturday. So please get your tickets in the next uh, couple weeks if you're interested because, uh, like I said, um, we keep a conference small, so it's an intimate setting. And, uh, you know, we want to we pay uh, strict and good attention to detail to make sure it's a, it's a great day to, to showcase just how good plant-based nutrition uh, really is. So I, I alluded a little bit to the book that Addie and I are writing, and um, uh, we're, we're going to hope to get it out um, soon. Um, I'm not sure when, we're, when the final, uh, the, when the launch is going to be. And uh, one of the recipes that's in it is my grandmother's salt rice and bread. And he's like, well, wait a minute, uh, Dr. Delaney. You know, this is and, and, and this is about the recipes that my mother and myself and Addie have created, and we share with our nutrition class. Um, but my love of cooking came from my mom and my grandmother, and my grandmother uh, was a country cook that she used a wood burning kitchen stove, no controls, and she made this wonderful bread called salt risin bread. And the people from the little town that she lived in would come on Thursdays and pay her a quarter a loaf when I was little to get a loaf of this salt rice and bread. And she would make 15 or 20 loaves of this bread. And I remember buying sacks of flour, 25 pounds, because she would make, you know, so much bread on Thursdays. And uh, the smell was just incredible. And this bread is uh, kind of a thick uh, bread, kind of cake, you know, I would say cake-like. It's wonderful toasted. Um, and it, it just great memories for me. Um, very labor intensive. Um, you, you, instead of it doesn't use yeast, it uses the fermentation of potatoes to actually ferment the, you know, the flour. Um, the original recipe calls for a lot of uh, lard or some sort of fat, and we've taken that out. Um, 
but the rest of the recipe is is for the most part cornmeal and a little bit of sugar to get the, the yeast or the or to activate fermentation. There aren't any yeast other than in the air, uh, and um, bread flour. And so when we were doing the nutrition facts for the salt rice and bread, and you know I. I wanted to put the bread in there as a dedication to my grandmother uh, because I, you know, the, all the hard work she's done as she did over her life and all the joy that she brought to people with her cooking, but I also wanted to make it more healthy. Um, so I looked at the nutrition facts and I compared it to Ezekiel bread. And so if we looked at slice per slice, um, the salt rising bread, like I said, it's a more thick, dense bread and has 135 calories a slice versus 80 calories for Ezekiel bread. Um, it only has 0.2 grams of fat versus 0.5 grams of fat in Ezekiel bread. It has 5 grams of protein versus 4 grams in Ezekiel bread. The protein largely comes not only from the flour, but it, uh, we use soy milk instead of uh, cow's milk. It has um, 1.2 grams of fiber, which is not a lot. I used white bread flour to kind of preserve that recipe. Um, a next version could be a whole wheat flour. Um, but versus three grams of uh, fiber in Ezekiel bread. And the sodium is only six, 7.6 milligrams versus 80 milligrams in Ezekiel bread. So all in all, it's, um, it's not a uh, bad bread. It's a little bit more calorie dense. Um, there is about um, 15 or 16 steps to making this bread. So if, as opposed to the other recipes in this book, it's quite complicated. Um, so it's not something that that people will make on a daily basis. My grandmother made it once a week for multitudes of people. And the reason why people bought it for, it's not that easy to make. You have to pay attention to the steps. And um, so I don't think it's something that people will abuse, you know, when you really, and, and, it's, and it's such a bread that if people, it has a bit of a, you know, it has a, a yeast, I hate, it's not a yeasty, but it has a fermented odor to it. And not everybody likes it. And if people don't like it, we don't give them any more when we make it because it takes so many steps to make it. We don't want people to waste it. And I think that if uh, somebody were to make it out of our cookbook, um, they too would, you know, cherish it. You either really like it and you're going to really preserve it. It freezes well and keep it for special occasions or, um, uh, or share it with those people that like it as opposed to, um, you know, just uh, giving it to anybody that, you know, may just let it um, get hard on the shelf, you know, and it doesn't have any preservatives in it. So you either freeze it uh, or share it with friends. And so when I make a batch, it makes six loaves and I share it with friends and, you know, my friends get a loaf of bread. So anyway, um, that's a teaser as far as our book that's going to come out. It's going to be, uh, have that, that recipe in it. And if nothing else, it's a uh, a great um, experiment to do to try to make something uh, new and different and exciting with a little science twist to it. When my daughter was young, we actually uh, did a science project with salt rice and bread and, and, the, and the history of, you know, how do you make bread without using yeast because yeast wasn't always available um, to people. So anyway, it's a, it's a good science uh, experiment for those with uh, a little bit of science in their background. Uh, to be able to make this bread. And um, to me, it, it brings back warm memories. So if you uh, decide to get our book eventually when it comes out, I hope you do enjoy and try to make it at least one time that salt rice and bread. And I, you know, and I, I think that, uh, you know, again, uh, when it comes to being healthy and doing these things, when you, when you cook your own food and yeah, it takes a little bit more effort, you have to, you know, purchase the, the ingredients and, um, perhaps read a recipe early on and chop the, you know, there's a little bit more food prep going on as opposed to open a box or going out to dinner. But it's, it comes with the satisfaction of knowing that you're doing the absolute best that you can to make yourself healthier and to preserve your health. Um, I don't think there's, a, you know, when people talk about hacks, you know, to get skinny quick or to, um, you know, get in shape quick or get abs quick, you know, none of that really works. It's, you know, we'd like there to be an easy button, but the reality of all good things in life require a little bit extra work. And I can't think of anything uh, better to dedicate yourself to than to cooking good food for yourself and your family. So, um, you know, I, I think that, 
you know, it's, it's important to put time in to those activities that, um, you know, show you care. And certainly, um, you know, microwaving a, a box meal is not a way to show your family that you really care about their health and nutrition. I always talk a little bit about uh, some of the things that are in the medical news. Um, there was another study released on fish oil, and there's no benefits from a cardiovascular point. Um, and, you know, they don't really have a lot of reasons other than they just didn't show any, any benefit. And the question comes, well, maybe there's so many toxins in the fat of the fish and the oil that it really outweighs the benefits of omega-3 fatty acids. And maybe when you add, when you take, you know, they didn't obviously look at uh, omega threes from flaxseed or hemp seed or chia seeds in the whole, or a, like would be a whole food. And we know that whole foods interact differently than you know if we extract an oil out of a, a fish, uh, or you know the protect, you know the in the from the con- most contaminated part of the fish, the fat uh, may cause the decrease or the result in no benefit from a cardiovascular view. We know that omega-3 fatty acids in the form of, uh, you know, kale and pinto beans and uh, hemp seeds and flax seeds and chia seeds, you know, it does a lot more than, you know, just benefits us from cardiovascular point, but the the decrease in inflammation throughout our body, um, the neurotransmitters that it helps to make. So uh, don't turn your back on your hemp seeds, chia seeds, and flax seeds. Uh, continue to add those to your, your breakfast and your foods. Um, and again, a whole food has a, is a big different difference than, a, than a, you know, something that's been processed and stripped of its nutrients. Um, on the low-carb diet front, um, in addition to, you know, there's data that show that, uh, you know, low-carb diets increase your cancer risk over time. Uh, we know that high protein diets uh, worsen kidney function and you know lead to higher cholesterol and increased cardiovascular risk. But now um, there's a study that came out that shows there increased risk of arrhythmias and atrial fibrillation, um, possibly due to the increased inflammation um, associated uh, with these diets. But nevertheless, you know, yet another um, reason to stay away from these extreme diets um, that, you know, decrease the, you know, our body wants glucose uh, for its energy. Uh, for the most part, our muscles rely on it, our brains rely on it. So to decrease the ability of that, um, uh, you know, uh, in our bodies can only uh, add more stress. And plus with a low carbohydrate diet comes increased fat, increased vasoconstriction, vasoconstriction leading to increased blood pressure, causing heart stretching and atrial, you know, and again, when your heart stretches, we get uh, abnormal electrical abnormalities, and that's when you get atrial fibrillation and other arrhythmias. So yet another reason to stay away from that and just eat your plants, fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. Um, And, you know, it doesn't have to be fancy. Um, Simple sweet potato, beans, and greens um, is a great meal. Keeping it simple um, is oftentimes the best. Again, you know, we did mushroom gravy, mashed potatoes, and and, uh, some mixed vegetables uh, uh, as a quick meal for Winnie uh, today in nutrition class to take down to her. Um, Doesn't have to be fancy, but it can be very nutritious. We also know that there was another study that came out uh, this week looking at statins and diabetes, and there's a 30, 38% uh, risk, increased risk in diabetes in this meta-analysis. And um, one of the things that they talked about in the discussion was that people that are overweight tend to have more risk of diabetes with statins than people that are normal weight. And they suggested that maybe people should lose weight if they have to take a statin. Well, I guess um, what should have been the discussion was if people ate a whole food plant-based diet and their weight normalized, so would their cholesterol and so would their diabetes. And you wouldn't have to worry about taking a statin and messing up your liver and messing up your pancreas. So uh, if we just address the root cause, then we don't need to, again, uh, have another diagnosis to treat something, you know, a pill for a pill, so to speak. So that was, uh, I I thought, uh, very interesting as far as their take on things that, you know, if if we just... Um, make people skinny, then they can take their statins without problems. There was also a study looking at the C-reactive protein, which is a marker of inflammation after a heart attack, and they looked at the C-reactive protein over a 16-week period after a heart attack, and they noticed that if it was elevated uh, or continued to go up as a sign of increasing inflammation, then people had more of a risk of another heart attack, death, stroke, uh, worsening vascular disease. 
and they looked at a powerful anti-inflammatory uh, medication or immune, uh, uh, or in a, a powerful medication that decreases immune function. That didn't help. It actually made things worse. Aspirin uh, perhaps makes things a little bit better. Maybe Plavix, which is another blood thinner that has some anti-inflammatory component, may make things better. But perhaps after somebody has a heart attack in the hospital, we shouldn't feed them, um, you know, eggs and um, sausage links and fatty foods and dairy. So maybe after their CRPs go up in the hospital because they're eating such bad hospital food. I don't know. Um, That's a little bit in jest, but wouldn't it be nice to decrease people's inflammation through a healthy diet, getting them some kale and getting them some colorful vegetables and fruits uh, and uh, perhaps some flaxseed and chia seed and, and hemp seeds and beans uh, might go a long way to help these people uh, lower their C-reactive protein. Um, I will probably have to wait a long time for that study to be added on. So, um, but anyway, um, those are the the late break medical news uh, things that are going on this week. In class today, we made uh, ice cream. It was the level three graduation or last day of class. Uh, for this six-week block, and it was kind of funny. I got a call this morning or text with somebody's glucose, and they said, what are we having in class today? And I said, we're having ice cream. And they said, like, that's a, that's a bad joke. You shouldn't do that. To, uh, you know, you shouldn't do that to a poor diabetic and tell them we're having ice cream for, you know, nutrition class. Well, we weren't having ice cream per se. I made a uh, nice cream out of uh, frozen bananas, fresh mint leaves and matcha green tea and a couple dates. Um, So that's what we really actually had. Um, But when they got there, I was actually making Winnie's uh, mushroom gravy and people smelled the mushroom and they came in and thought, I thought we were having nice cream, but everybody wanted the mushroom gravy, which is pretty funny. So even though it was dessert day, everybody was really looking forward to the mashed potatoes and gravy that I was making for Winnie instead of... uh, the matcha tea uh, banana ice cream, but the reality of it is they, they everybody liked it, so it was a nice uh, nice dessert. Again, very healthy. Bananas, mints have antioxidants, right? Nitric oxide production. Uh, the matcha green tea, uh, again, a lot of antioxidants. So what better dessert? I put a little cinnamon in it. Um, you know, so go ahead and try that one. It's really, really easy. Uh, do it in your Vitamix or your, um, uh, you know, the ice cream maker. Um, yeah, I forget what it's called. The, um, that they make a, like an an ice cream, uh, Yo Nana, I think that's what it is that people use. Um, but it, it works really well in a, in a Vitamix and just spin things down. And so that's a great dessert. So, uh, in summary, um, go to the website, drdelaney.com, and get your tickets for the 4th Annual Charlotte County Plant-Based Nutrition Conference. I uh, look forward to giving you a race report after next weekend. If you're going to the Asheville Marathons, look for me. I'll have my Jamie Delaney Plant-Based Nutrition shirt on, so give me a yell. Uh, love to take a selfie with you, and um, I'll look forward to... Um, sharing my surprise nutrition um, edition next week after the um, podcast. Let you know how, or after the race, and let you know how things go. So until then, um, you know, eat a very colorful diet. Share a colorful, beautiful plant-based diet with your friends and family. Don't be ashamed. Get out and move. Bend your body in all the ways it was supposed to. And uh, have a great week.